Skull, everyone. Welcome to the Geekdom Games cast. This is episode number 53, I believe. Uh, I probably got that wrong, so I'm sorry. As you notice, I'm not here with Brother Moody, but my name is Mike, as always. Uh, and I'm with two great guests, one you, one returning. Our returning guest, just had a birthday, looks great. Dan Witt, how are you doing, sir? I'm uh, doing fantastic. I recovered. There was a lot of mead, legit. <laughs> Still some here. <laughs> and so we're going to keep those celebrations going. Skull. Skull. I Skull. don't have anything to drink with you, but uh, I wish I did. You, right, got tea. <laughs> you went to Total Wine out here in the Valley, right? And uh, yep. you got basically mead, like real actually Viking blood mead. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, and what's called Viking blood. <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, and... We're, we're not doing, obviously, if you read by the description and you could see by the way Dan's dressed and my background, we are talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We'll also be talking about Call of Duty. But first of all, we have a new guest today. Justin, how are you, sir? Um, welcome to the Geekdom Games cast. Thank you very much for having me, man. I am awesome. I am honored to be here. Uh, you have a pretty fancy setup. Am I guessing right that you are a streamer? Uh, no, not at all, man. Oh, um, shoot. This is, uh, I do a podcast or I'm on break right now because uh, I started a new job, so I haven't really been able to get back to it, but I run a podcast and uh, this is my double parlor and behind me. That's just a big sound panel that I made and some LED lights. And that's a chunk of Christmas decorations that still has to get put up. So <laughs> <laughs> there's not much else to it. What's the podcast? Uh, shout that out. So people can listen. Uh, it's bright lights and scary shadows. It's basically where we will go between a uh, well-known topic and then we'll look at the lesser known side of it, or we'll go into uh, cult classic type of topics. Uh, one of the last episodes was on the hollow earth. And so we went through all of the, you know, fact and fiction and myth and, you know, all of that stuff that surrounds it and tried to put it all together. And uh, I do skits and uh, stupid accents and, crazy commercials and it's uh it's very very uh out there and fun and yeah can you do a answer. good can you do a good uh a good viking accent can you do a good avor i don't know like a real viking accent I'd be yeah like, i promise Hello, Moody, i, I pro am here I, for I, the puce <laughs> 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 i promised moody that we would do some avor for him uh to, to recognize him uh Moody is sick right now. He's having some pains. It's nothing pandemic related. So don't worry about that, guys. But uh might be a little scarier because he kind of doesn't know what it is. So yeah, for awesome. our brother, we hope. Oh, God. It's a terrible accent. Sorry, Moody. Dan, can you? <laughs> <laughs> for our brother, Moody, best wishes and get well. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh, is that how we do? Hi. Hi for <laughs> Moody. Moody. We wish for you, my good man, <laughs> to rise and feast once more upon your enemies. Good and well wishes, may they scream your name from the tops of Valhalla. Skull. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you, got, you got one level up in charisma because of your flighting. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to, before we get into our topics of the show today, we are going to, we have one new topic that I kind of wanted to talk about really quickly. It also involves a foreign land, but this foreign land is Japan because we got some pictures out from Nintendo World in uh, Japan. That's happening at Universal Studios out there. Um, and uh, Justin, you saw the pictures. What, what do you think? What, how, how, what are your thoughts about this? It looks super duper cool. You know, I, I would just be bummed if like there wasn't a portal that you couldn't jump into and it didn't like go woo, 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 like, you know, it didn't make like the noise <laughs> as you went in. Uh, but it definitely looks like uh, it's something that is wicked dope that anybody would enjoy. Yeah. As far as amusement parks, uh, they kind of just threw everything at the wall in a, in a way that's like pretty awesome where, it lo literally looks like you're stepping into another world, which is kind of what you want out of those amusement parks. Even Galaxy's Edge for Star Wars at Disneyland is pretty cool, but it kind of just looks like some big desert planet, you know, like until you see the Millennium Falcon there and you see all the, the costume people walking around. But as soon as you step into Nintendo Land, it seems like you're just in the Mushroom Kingdom in an acid trip almost. You're seeing 
<laughs> seeing like a Bowser golden statue at the top of the stairs. You're seeing the, the clouds from Super Mario 3 and 2. I'm guessing it's more 3. How uh, horrific would that be, though? Like, uh, if you were me. tripping, you know, like walk in and just see some goombies come running out, bro, I'd be fucking <laughs> losing my mind. Like, ah! Oh, I, so bad. I, I think it would be awesome and then get really scary probably on the Mario Kart ride. <laughs> and then uh, when you see that big, huge golden Bowser and maybe if you see like a, yeah, if you see a Koopa around you, you and you <laughs> see it moving because you're on psychedelics, you might be a little bit like, oh shit, do I jump on this thing? And uh, we prefer you not to if you're listening to the podcast. Don't get kicked out of Universal Studios on our account. <laughs> um the 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 Mario Kart ride we only we didn't get to see it in motion apparently it's on tracks but it looks awesome theming wise you look like you're in a Mario Kart uh entryway um and we did get confirmation on the AR goggles it is going to be an AR experience and you're going to be wearing basically a Mario hat with the cappy goggles on uh which sounds really awesome and uh I, I see them pulling that off in Japan. It's coming out. It's opening in February, which is still technically in the middle of the pandemic. But you know, Japanese culture has been really good about being hygienic. Anyways, they already said before the pandemic that we're going to be cleaning these things a lot. So I'm sure that's going to be even more so. Uh, we should be getting them in, in Universal Hollywood sometime later next year. Maybe is the oh, rumor. Cool. And then Universal Studios Florida, which has way more space for it. But I know anecdotally that the construction in Universal Studios Hollywood is pretty far along. They've been chugging along during all of COVID. So I don't, they haven't missed a beat and we might be seeing that pretty soon. But um, Japan's ready to go. February, it's going to be out there. Uh, you've been seeing the B-roll. Let us know what you think at the Geeked and Games cast uh, Facebook group. Please join. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. Um, Dan, you're a big amusement park guy or you just didn't care about the news? As we've discussed before, I'm not a crowd person, period. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, I'm right. very much a shut-in. So. Mm-hmm. so amusement parks are the worst worst place I mean, to be. I, if that's what we're doing and we're going to amusement parks, I'm in. I'm game. But <laughs> I, it's not something that I go out of my way to do. They're fun, but I just don't really like being shoulder-to-shoulder with humans anyway, you know, let alone during, you know, this time. So, you know. I might check it out. Might not. Still haven't even been to Disneyland since Galaxy's Edge opened. Mm. You know, just yeah, because it's, it's been, not really a thing. It's been, it's been nuts busy since it opened, so it's okay. probably a good thing. Um, if you didn't want people to stand shoulder to shoulder, you shouldn't wear such inviting furry shoulder uh, <laughs> cow, man. That looks, that looks so warm and fuzzy. It is. <laughs> In my raving days, I would definitely be all up on that and just <laughs> petting you until you, like, push me off of you to do like a remix to uh, furry wall from get him to the greek but instead it's like furry yarl furry yarl <laughs> oh what was the name of the joints that they smoked to get all a, the- jeffrey. A, a jeffrey a jeffrey that's because right. who could be scared of a jeffrey a jeffrey uh, and then it and goes was- back to get you <laughs> <laughs> and those starring cole meany was his dad and he was in star trek where they have jeffrey tubes uh sorry oh that was a really quick connection (laughs) boom (laughs) i don't know where that came from but i had to say it out of my mouth to move on um (laughs) so yeah the nintendo land thing that's pretty cool i can't wait to see much more or to see way more uh there were other things in the news but that's one thing i wanted to talk about until we got into the stuff uh but and let's get into that stuff uh let's go from 2021 to 1980 something and uh Talk about the new Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War. We've all been playing it. I have been enjoying the multiplayer uh, a lot. I'll I'll just say my overall thoughts first. Uh, I'm a big Call of Duty fan. I really loved Modern Warfare last year. I think it was an amazing step. Uh, I, I, on this podcast, I said that Modern Warfare was kind of like a next gen upgrade while being on the same gen just because of everything they implemented. I was a big fan of the the gunfight game modes and multiplayer. I was a big fan of the mounting on you're mounting your guns on stuff. Uh, big fan of the it's so, it seems so small, but doors like that kind of adds a little to the Call of Duty experience. And then just the way they handled multiplayer with the community and continually doing their seasons and Warzone earlier on this year, it was just a or was that last year? It was just a huge step forward. And I do think that this multiplayer iteration 
took a little step back, but still, it's still had like I, it's a two steps forward, one step back situation for me, where it's um, I think if Modern Warfare came out this year with the with this gen's graphics and uh, had all the changes that they have now or they had then now, uh, it would it would be huge. Like it, it was already huge, but it would just be like almost a system seller for like any console of this generation. Um, this has the same good feel to me of the guns. This, the graphics look great. Um, there's a little weird thing on PS5 and PS4 where you could accidentally launch the PS4 version of Call of Duty. A lot of people have been talking about it. Please watch out when you're hovering over the icon on your PS5. It'll say Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Um, and if it says nothing after it, you're fine. If it says PS4, it's obviously back and pat. I don't know why. It's like a weird bug that they're like downloading the PS4 version as well as the PS5 version, even if you're just getting the PS5 version. Because I got a review code and it's still downloaded that way for me. Um, other than that, they've been, they rolled out Nuketown. I like the maps a lot. I think the maps are pretty good um as far as like doing uh, giving you a variety of experiences of like long range short range uh close encounter areas um they hide their new modes which are like the the fire team mode and the um assault mode they're basically like kind of battlefield-esque modes they hide them in like weird featured playlists which is weird everything feels so bare bones in a weird way but we know that season one's coming up and they're adding gunfight and they're adding some stuff so I think they're just doing a slower rollout than Modern Warfare did. But uh, it took me a while. I was at first kind of like, oh, like it, it made me cringe a little how like bare bones it seemed and how skimpy it seemed, especially for the price tag that it was, even though I got a review code, I, I'm an asshole. But also, but I, I feel for you people that had to pay <laughs> for it. you heard about the consumers, yeah. Yeah, I feel, I, f I feel for the working person and uh, how like it would seem like you're not getting much, but I think stick with it. They're going to give you way more. They're going to give you some exclusive uh, blops, war zone stuff soon. We don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll put it back to you. Um, Justin, what are you thinking? What do you think about the campaign? Cause you've been playing the campaign more. Uh, I don't like one thing. One okay. thing I fucking despise above Ooh. all else, right? Is that you can get stuck in loops where it'll be a friendly fire loop. You know, so if you throw a grenade and then, you know, Woods rolls up, but then you die, you know, and then when it reloads that checkpoint, you know, Woods just keeps running into the grenade over and over and over and over. And oh, it, it happened to me two, uh, two or three separate times. And um, it, it was absolutely infuriating. Um, outside of that, so far, I love it. You know, I, I really enjoyed the campaign. The graphics have been uh, great. Um, but a big part of that is probably because I just got a new TV. So <laughs> that's uh, really what helping. You, what uh, are you rocking? Uh, I'm on Xbox. So I got the, uh, the Samsung QLED. Oh, shoot. Nice. And, uh, are you 120 hertz? Are you rolling with that? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And that Had looks to be. amazing. It looks so much better. So much better. You know, I find everything just looks better at that, at a, at a higher frame rate. It's more natural. And um, they're going through all these efforts to make these games so amazing. And uh, the 120 really, really brings it out, you know. It's cool that they give you the option to do 120 also, which is, like, something you don't see in a lot of console games at the moment, you know. Like, Call of Duty is good at that. Um, Dan, what about you? You've been playing both, multiplayer and a little bit of single player. How, how are you feeling about the campaign and the story and stuff? You know, I was nodding my head a lot through what everybody was saying because, I mean, it's – yeah, the, you guys aren't making that up. That's 100% true. Um as far as the loops go, yeah. I mean, right when the game launched, where I was there at 9 p.m. Pacific time playing it right away, I jumped into campaign because that's what I was most excited for was the Black Ops Treyarch campaigns are always the something best. to take home. Great, yeah. Yeah. And so I was really excited about that. That's what I was anticipating even more than multiplayer. And I got caught in one of those loops right from the beginning where you complete the first mission and then you go to the second mission where you have to scope the guy out showing up at the plane. And then yeah. it kept on saying to me that the guy that I was chasing in the previous mission got away and it would just end the mission. And oh, so wow. that was a pretty serious glitch because I couldn't even get, so I scoped the guy coming in the car and then it would say the guy from the previous mission had escaped. I'm like, wait, what? What? I caught that guy. <laughs> what are you talking about? So then what I had to do was just quit out, play the first mission again. 
and then it worked perfectly fine. And so that it's was like an Avengers cool. glitch. <laughs> that was vicious. I think it might have also had something to do with the fact that like the game hadn't fully completely finished downloading because it did that sort of thing. It was still like installing the rest of the game. But either way, it's over with. And also, I mean, a really good friend of mine worked on a lot of the art for the game and a lot of the visuals and the storyboards. So that was also close to my heart. And then another really good close friend of mine is Perseus. Uh, oh! A buddy of mine, actor Andre Evchenko, was, uh, you might know him from Stranger Things, the most previous season. He was Perseus. And so that was a trip for me as well to see, you know, all these things come together that I actually was, you know, you know, just one person removed from all their work. And so that was cool to see. The, and to be cool. completely honest, the, the campaign's great, but I was expecting more. I was mm. expecting more. I, I was really blown away by Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2's campaign. And this one I felt, I was like, okay, it's good, but it, it didn't live up. I actually think Modern Warfare's campaign is better. Really? Um, but, you know, there's, it's not that's, not, that's not that it's a bad thing. I, I still think the campaign is fantastic. But I think I was expecting more, and I set the bar a little bit too high for my own expectations. Um, and as far as multiplayer goes, you know, Mike, you brought up a lot of good points about doors and the way the maps are designed. And I think that a lot of that's intentional to force players to stop camping. Mm. Because if you look at the maps, they're all your, your, store, your, your standard, you know, three lanes of approach. But there's so many ins and outs of those lanes that if someone's camping on satellite, for example, off in the corner, there's like eight different ways for you to get to them. So mm. I appreciate that. I Because I'm, uh, I'm a very aggressive player. I don't like to camp. I like to hard charge and use the gunplay to actually be better than people. Um, so I actually <laughs> think the maps are a vast improvement. And that's, that, that's probably also why they did away with mounting your weapon on walls and on other surfaces. So it's just kind of being a little more arcadey and making you actually not camp. Not to say it's not prevalent because there's still plenty of campers on, on sniping lanes. And I only play hardcore. So my KD is about 1.1 <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Because there's a lot, it's still out there. And I do like the score streaks. I do like that addition. I feel like, you know, if you're playing great, you're going to be kicking a lot of butt. You're going to be calling in score streaks all the time. But even if you're not playing great, you still have chances to do other things to kind of have that experience. And I, I, I appreciate that because, yeah, there's lots of games where I'm just off. But I can still get my score streaks up, even if I'm having an off game. And it is still pretty cool. And the score streaks feel pretty great. Some of them are unbalanced. Some of them are fantastic. I pretty much just stick with napalm and artillery because I I definitely get people every single time, especially on Nuketown. <laughs> you just drop yep. that right in the middle, and you just <laughs> you see it just get red everywhere. Yeah, there's no. Um, I don't think there's any avoiding napalm on Nuketown. Like even in no. the garage, even the in the houses, I don't think I've been able to avoid napalm if it's been directly over my head. Spawn camping on napalm on on uh, on uh, Nuketown, especially on hardcore, is definitely a pain in the ass. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it's rough. It's rough. But you yeah. know we're getting used to it. And look, Warzone's dropping in a couple days, four days, on December 10th, and I'm really excited to see what they do with that map because it's all it's supposed to be all different. It's supposed to be the same place, but it's supposed to be kind of I don't I mean I don't really even know. So yeah. I haven't been kept up. I've been so busy at work. I haven't been kept up with what the, you know, other channels like um, they, you know, do reviews and they get the secret crates and they decode the messages and do all that kind of stuff to give you a preview of what's coming forward. But I'm excited. I'm definitely going to hop in on uh, on the 10th and see what's going on with the new Warzone. I mean, Treyarch famously was the one that had the, the studio that did uh, Battle Royale first for the Call of Duty franchise. Blackout, they did it yeah. on Black Ops blackout on black ops 4 so um i i would love to see a new map in the, map or the, in the battle royale map so yeah yeah um did any of us play zombies that's a good thing i forgot to ask earlier i haven't yet because uh i don't do randos yeah i only play with friends i don't and i'm not gonna drop in there alone with randos i don't do that yeah so i just don't have you know i'm getting old Same I'm 37 here. now and i don't have enough friends that play it online so <laughs> i haven't tried zombies I hear it's great. I hear it's fantastic from everybody that plays it. I see that people are just basically already max prestige in the game. It is basically from doing zombies. That's that's crazy because uh, for for me the 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 grind's a little slow going sometimes for getting new guns yeah. and getting new attachments for guns um, until they drop Nuketown and then you can just grind that over and over. And they had do a double XP weekend when they had Nuketown. 
um i felt like it yep. was a uh, few and far between i was still playing and i still loved it because uh, i got some buddies too that play it and it's our it's like our way to hang out but um yeah it it just uh it just takes forever i thought i was really bad but i guess everyone's having that kind of yeah uh, deal <laughs> uh, maybe when they do because they, they haven't dropped any tokens for anyone you can't not that i'd love when you could buy a monster energy drink and get a token for double xp uh, but I feel like Modern Warfare gave you more chances on random days. Yeah. Be like, oh, it's a, it's a not national chicken nuggets day. Here's a token for double XP for no reason. You know, like they, right. Infinity Ward was pretty good at giving you just tokens and earning tokens. But which I think kind of shocking. Which yeah. Is kind of shocking. You know, Infinity Ward really kind of did it in about face on there. I mean, they're still charging you for everything, but at least <laughs> yeah. you're getting enough for what they're charging now. It's not like you have to pay. Twenty dollars for your double XP token. No, it doesn't happen. No. Yeah. The maps were mostly free. Wait, were they all free? Weren't they? Yeah, they were all free. Yeah. So I mean, they really did an about face on that, and I'm confident that Treyarch's going to do the same thing. Yeah, me too. I think they've taken a lot of Infinity Ward's uh, gifts and kind of uh, molded into Call of Duty, which is which is fun. It's still crossplay. That's something that started with Modern Warfare. It's still uh, you can still turn off crossplay you could you could go over yep. to different accounts different systems and still have your account all that stuff it's it's really easy to play um is there any other thoughts that we had yep. on call of duty i appreciate the shared universe mm, i like yeah. that i really yeah. like that as we've established many 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 times on other shows i'm a lore and canon nerd mm -hmm. so stuff like that like seeing zakaev i you know, geeked out like crazy because I love the fact that it's a shared universe now that there, there's so much possibility between that. So I'm, I was tickled pink to say the least. Yeah. Um, I did play the campaign too. And I really enjoyed the, I enjoyed the, like the throwback action movie feel of it. It, yeah. it like, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that, that the one dude looks like, Rob <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hurt that that one dude looks like Robert Redford. So I'm like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. already in that whole sleepers kind of like sneakers mindset or whatever. And uh, just everyone's actions. Um, I like that it's not, I like that it's kind of like separated from reality because Modern oh, Warfare did a, yeah, yeah, even though there's like straight up President Reagan there, uh, Modern Warfare <laughs> did this thing where like they were just like doing alternate history events of the Middle East. And this is more of just like a, there's a big bad you want to go get them you got your team everyone on your team you get to know it's like that whole crew uh holly, like action movie crew montage or whatever like uh it, it just has that whole feeling and i really like it um but yeah call of duty uh should we do what what, what would you say your bible scores are so far out of five uh justin we'll start with you oh uh, so far only having the story um the story i i gotta uh, without going any further into it i can only go three out of five oh okay but yeah that's an incomplete score because you haven't played any of the multiplayer and stuff so yeah uh dan what about you solid four solid four i think i think it, it checks all the boxes you know and i think any hang-ups i might have had were just because i set the bar too high for myself and also might have been a little call of duty fatigue because i mean to be completely honest i've been grinding modern warfare for the entire year yeah same the most i had played a call of duty ever and so I, by the time it came out, I was just kind of like, okay, this is more or less the same, but different. Mm -hmm. And, but for me, I think it's a solid four out of five. I, I can appreciate what they did. And I also like that in the campaign, you can have different endings. You do different things and there's different yeah. avenues of approach. So mm -hmm. I definitely appreciate that. And I, I give credit where it's due. So I'll give it a solid four. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Probably four, maybe a 3.75 at first, but once I got into it a little bit more, it was a four. Um, I think that score will probably go up maybe with the season pass uh, if right. they do if they do just as good of a job as the Activision has been doing with their season passes and supporting the stuff that has the ability to go up. And that's saying a lot because I gave uh, Modern Warfare was one of the top three, my top three games last year. I, I never put a Call of Duty up there, but uh, Modern yeah. Warfare was up there. It was like really, yep. really solid game. Cool. Um, yeah, but now, so we're going for the Cold War, 1984, uh, to another war that's kind of cold because of snow and shit. But uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, a game that, uh, between the three of us, we've played different increments of time. I've played 25 hours or so, 30. I think I've been up to 30, counting today's playthrough. Uh, 
Justin, you're at 60, right? 60-ish hours? Somewhere, probably less than that. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Dan, you're like 80, 87 days, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Somewhere to 87, close to 90 at this point right now. Um, Justin, let's start with you. What are your overall thoughts on Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Have you been uh, an Assassin's Creed player before this? Yeah, yeah. Um, the last game that made me stop playing Assassin's Creed was when the player had a tomahawk. And okay. And that was when it came to America. And this one, I had a lot of the same fears because I was, I, I was riding the high on Odyssey. Uh, I haven't put that many hours into an Assassin's Creed game, and I don't know how long. And, you know, to come into this one, which is more ground and pound, uh, woods, very similar to uh, the Revolution yeah. one. And so I, I was very leery about it. Uh, and going into it, I, I really, I liked it. I liked how it was different. I like how it had different aspects to uh, some of the other Assassin's Creed as far as feel and texture and overall um, draw, I guess. And, uh, and so I played a lot as Eivor in my initial phase. Probably about half of my play has just been base Eivor, not, not, no skills or anything, just running around Norway doing as much as I could before I progressed off into England. And uh, I got to say, I was, I'm a little bummed out at, at this point. You know, I, I wanted to feel Eivor as a Viking. I wanted to feel this transition uh, from him into this other type of a character. And I feel like they really missed that mark, you know, quite solidly um, where they had, they had that chance to really make him into something m more and they really didn't, you, you know, they, they didn't really flesh out this whole Viking world aesthetic and what it would mean to be a Viking and an assassin living up to these types of credos and everything. And it was just kind of shoehorned in. And um, so I didn't really care for that that much. And, and but outside of that, my other big uh, annoyance is the, the paper chases. I don't like that they brought those back. Um, I hate those stuff, fucking running on rooftops and trees to grab a, a tattoo <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know and it's not even anything that's really you know uh meaningful whatever and um but so far so good ultimately um i do like it i do like how the savagery of the some of the combat feels at home in the assassins uh in, Val, in the valhalla um franchise and um I do like the draw. I, I like a lot of it. You know, there are some of those things where it's some of them, uh, like Dan, Dan said, uh, it's kind of repetitive. It's some of the same old, same old that they're bringing back. And yeah, that does kind of creep up on you after a while. Um, Eivor is just clumsy as all hell yeah. to, to be an assassin, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and it does make sense to some degree because he is wearing all this extra like heavy stuff, but there's just no grace in him at all you know, yep. to become an assassin. And, um, and some of the movement, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's off-putting. Some of it can be very, very off-putting, but there's also those points of the game that can really draw you in. Um, I don't feel like it has that same hook that uh, Odyssey had. You know, Odyssey, I would just get lost. I would just be running around, uh, hitting the message boards and, and, and smashing every single person that came. And I was at level 75 before I, I, I had half of the story done. It was ridiculous. I was going through the rest of it just like a hot knife through butter. It was, <laughs> or, or it was mentally hilarious. And, um, <laughs> and so there's definitely some strong differences in between this iteration of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Um, I liked what they were going for. I, I would like to almost see this fully visualized, but I don't think that they can, you know, they, they can't go back and do anything like this unless they pull some, you know, big changes in a DLC update or something like that. But I feel like, uh, if we're going to stay back in that time, you know, it was, it was weighed, it was measured and it was found wanting. Interesting. All right. Uh, I actually agree with some of that, uh, but I, I think uh, I just haven't played any of the Assassin's Creeds for more than 20, uh, more than 10 hours probably is the most I gave Origins. Wow. Not, not for the 
not because Assassin's Creed is something I didn't like, but uh, just some other game happened to be out every single time. Right, that 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 Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the first time that, like, no other game, like, uh, Cyberpunk kind of got out of the way of Assassin's Creed. Everything got out of the way, and uh, I've been able to, like, it's, it's the only other game on PS5 that I kind of want to play that I haven't beat yet. So um, I've been digging in, and uh, it's it's a it's good to hear someone else's point of view, someone who's played Assassin's Creed's. Uh, Dan, brother, uh, <laughs> I've been waiting for this since we've recorded on Ghost of Tsushima and uh, our, all our stuff in the, this summer. Um, how has Valhalla been treating you? Uh, you've been, <laughs> is it safe to say you've been pretty excited for this one? Yeah, I mean, just quick reiteration. For those of you who don't know, I'm Scandinavian. I'm a history major from college. So my degree is in. So I have eaten up every single one of the Assassin's Creed games because while they may not be exactly historically accurate, they're reverent to the time and the place. So I love that. I eat it up. And the fact that I'm Scandinavian couldn't have my interest and anticipation for this game be any higher. And I wrote for the, uh, for God Hates Geeks, the original first impressions of the review. And I think I I was very harsh and I was very unforgiving of a lot of the things that Justin's actually saying is that like it just it didn't feel like an Assassin's Creed it just felt like a it just really kind of felt like the Witcher to be Mm -hmm. honest and that's kind of been what this franchise has kind of been trying maybe to emulate was the success of CD Projekt Red's Witcher because look at Origins and Odyssey you can draw pretty straight lines directly to the Witcher not that that's a bad thing Eivor Apers that (laughs) Justin's talking about is just it, it is a chore because he Again, he feels like he weighs 2,000 pounds. And, you know, his, his platforming is not there the same way. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe they try to funnel you into just having straight-up combat a little bit more than assassination. I've gotten the hang of it after almost 90 hours of gameplay, and I'm, you know, perfectly fine at it now, sneaking around and being able to pull off, you know, assassinations on high-value targets. But I was very un- – I think I was a little unfair – at first because as i went further into the game you find that the story gets so much more gripping because his whole reason for being there is resolved in the prologue before you even leave norway yeah so i felt what else is there for this guy to do but in fact all throughout england you peel back the layers of what the templars for those of us that haven't gotten further in the game, but you associate this order with the Templars, you get a more sense of what all is going on and how Eivor fits into the bigger picture of the Assassin's Creed lore. And I, I'm here for it because it's gotten so much better. Now, he doesn't exactly ever really become an assassin. That's another thing that they just don't do. They just give him the hidden blade and here you go. Again, I'm not totally done, but it feels like they're reconnecting with Desmond Miles. It feels like they're reconnecting, at least with the overall story, that we all fell in love with with Assassin's Creed 2. And everything that came with that. It feels like they're getting back to that story. And that's what I was incredibly critical of, is it just felt like, oh, we're just having a Viking and dressing him up in Assassin's clothes. Kind of. But it's getting there, and as I've progressed, the story has really picked up. So, Like I said, I was a little unfair in my first impressions, being only about maybe 20 hours or maybe 30 in at the time. Um, But I definitely would give it a different score now, uh, given the opportunity, because I think that it, if you're looking, I said this in the the first impressions, if you're looking for a Viking simulator, this is it. If you're looking for an Assassin's Creed game, you might be left wanting. But it's getting there. It's doing, it's a very slow burn on the story. And I think that once it's concluded, I might end up being kind of blown away. Nice. Um, wow. That's a, um, I'm bummed a little bit because you're so excited for this and it hasn't really met your <laughs> expectations, but I'm glad that it's getting better for you. <laughs> to be fair, I have not played a whole lot of Call of Duty because of Assassin's Creed. Like, I feel the draw to this game because for me, it's incredibly fun. And I'm just, I'm, I'm finding that I just want to progress more. 
I want to interact with these historical characters. I want to meet the sons of Ragnar Lothbrook. You know, I, I, I want to go through that and I want to experience that and, and live Eivor's tale. I haven't stepped out of the Animus once. I know you can do that. And one time they kind of force you like, oh, you can do this too. But that doesn't interest me. And I probably should because as a lore <laughs> fanatic, that's probably something I should do. And I probably will when I have more time. But, you know, the story, it's, it, it, it's starting to feel, or again, around probably the 40 to 50 hour mark is where it really started to feel like, okay, this is what I recognize. This is what, this is what speaks to me is this is like, okay, we're dealing with the order of the ancients that are going to become something so much worse than what anyone has any idea of right now. And there's these hidden ones that are trying to, which is the Assassin's Brotherhood. Because remember, this game predates Altair. This yeah. is when it's it's people got to remember that this this isn't a recent thing this was in the 900 ad so this is still very early on so to speak in what they're dealing with and it's actually planting the seeds very well for a lot of other assassin's creed games that happened in the past but it's kind of filling a lot of those gaps so mm. you know it even ties into assassin's creed 3 it ties into all that and it's like oh i i recognize that you know, it's that meme of Leonardo DiCaprio in, uh, in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He's pointing at the TV like, ah, that's me. So there's a couple of those moments in this game where it's like, oh, that was in Assassin's Creed 3. That's how that got there. Oh, okay, cool. You know, like, so there's a lot of stuff that it's just definitely a slow burn. you got to give it some time. And, you know, I respect the people that are going through and finding, because I have a couple friends that are just going to every single dot and uncovering every single thing on the map. I'm not doing that. I'm not wasting time with any of those. I'm, I'm hunting for loot. I'm fighting and I'm doing the story. I, I don't chase after papers because you're right. It's a waste of time because he feel he platforms like a tank. But the difference is this time you don't actually have to catch it. You just have to follow it to where it ends. Yeah. I so learned that I one uh, halfway through. Yeah. 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 I was like, I can't chase after this thing because I can't catch it. He's so <laughs> slow. The, the, the jumping you, you go here when you're supposed to go straight. But you just have to be there where it ends, and then you collect it. But again, yeah, it's for a tattoo design, and it's whatever. <laughs> but I do. I, I, I love it. I love it. So don't feel bad for me, because I'm actually getting a ton of enjoyment out of it. It's one of the few things I look forward to in life. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, I, I definitely picked up on something. Something that you said back in the day, uh, Dan, like uh, on the games cast in the summer kind of has stuck out in my mind as as much as i've been playing this or when i've been playing this is, is it's a very meat and potatoes game i guess if it's since we're in england it's a bangers and mash kind of game <laughs> it uh it's very fine good entertaining interesting um the amount of variety like i said before i haven't played any of the assassin's creed too much games too much so um everything's new to me there's no like precedent that's disappointing me right so that's where I'm coming from right now. So um, for better or for worse, it's made it so I can have all these multiple experiences, especially for a game uh, on the PS5, it, like the loading times seriously has changed kind of gaming for me as far as just like, I don't have to commit to like, before I would be like, oh, do I want to sit down, wait through four minutes of credits and then a one minute loading screen to get into this game for a little bit for 20 minutes before bed. Now I could just kind of like pop on play for 20 minutes and then pop off um and with a variety in this game with as far as like the i could go fight a zealot i could go raid a camp i could go do a story quest i could do um i could fish if i want um yeah. that has been kind of really good to just like you know have a game to play you know like it just feels like a fine entertaining good game to play and actually like since uh I hadn't like got the chance to like get to know a lot of like Danish mythology, like Norse Viking stuff. Like this, this period of history, like I kind of just cheated my way through the history classes. I'm, I'm, no, you didn't because they don't, they don't teach this in schools. Oh, okay. It, well, it, that's it then because I've been intrigued because I had no idea about this world and this world has kind of fascinated me. It will on the spectrum of like been fascinating to not boring as far as like all the quests and the allegiances. And I like the episodic nature of the allegiances. Yeah. Like you go 
to a place and then you have like four or five story quests and you get like a little story and then you can kind of move on which helps alleviate the fact that Eivor like you guys both said I totally agree with you is kind of a character that's like what do you want like what do you what do you what's your want in life Eivor I don't get you the the whole branching dialogue path makes it even like makes Eivor less of a character for me I'm just like well sometimes you're an asshole because I pick you to be an asshole and sometimes you're sweet because I pick you to be sweet but what are you supposed what 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 did the developers have in mind for you as a person because like you're having these trippy moments with mushrooms and psychedelics, but then, <laughs> then you talk to your brother about how he's going crazy because yeah. he's like, as a God complex, it's like, that doesn't, that doesn't bide. Well, you were just saying that you were looking through Odin's eyes. Um, <laughs> and a uh, slight spoiler for people. My I'm since I'm 30 hours into the game, 15, like halfway into that. Uh, I kind of got like a, a good respite in, the form of not going out of, out of the animus, but uh, I'll just say you go into another world and uh, another character, it's a whole different map and it's stunning. It looks stunning. Yeah. It looks really good. Um, and you kind of explore this whole different area and it's kind of indirectly related to Eivor for now, but you're technically seeing it through to uh, her eyes. I actually picked um, the default animus, like let the animus choose what yeah. Avor, you should be so right now I'm, a, I'm the woman Avor, um and then uh so the person that i become in those trips is a is a man so it's like a whole different thing and then i'm seeing a, a very non-disney-fied world uh <laughs> i'll just say that world um for the first time and i think that's really i think it's really intriguing it's really cool to see and uh as far as like as uh i, I mean in opposition to like the the kind of the flat hilly nature of the english countryside that's just kind of the same uh areas for the most part uh it's just it was a cool break to go to this fantastical place uh, on this drug trip um which was really cool so uh i'll just say the seer in your town uh if you want to go on this drug trip uh build her house and uh she'll <laughs> she'll help you go to this different world if you need a little break from avor uh justin uh anything else anything else what's your favorite thing so far about because you you had a lot of annoyances but is there one thing that like really gets you going when you uh, encounter it uh i would uh i would agree with dan you know um the more you play the more you know it uh tends to grow on you and um you just kind of get more comfortable as it goes and that's one of the things i really like about the assassin's creed i, I find that you can just kind of once you get in the groove, you, you can stay there for a while, just be happy and play. And I feel like that's one thing that has transcended over into this game, and I do really enjoy that very, very much. Uh, the one thing I would have enjoyed the most, and which I would enjoy for them to do maybe going forward, is bring a true co-op you know, to the game. I don't want your Viking to come stylistically <laughs> be part of my crew. You know what I mean? I would yeah. love to you know, have, have you or Dan and, and, you know, us actually go in and do a raid together. I thought um, that was another missed opportunity that would have been bananas to have in the game. Uh, and, and that would be one thing that's on my wish list for the future. Uh, but overall, I, I do find the game is, is very enjoyable to play. Uh, it feels a little more natural, you know, and whether or not that, that's a step back or a step forward, I don't know how much we want to feel natural when we're playing a video game. We kind of want to feel a little supernatural. And, and so when, when Eivor has taken his or her, you know, lumps and stumbles of falling and taking fall damage and whatever, because they're just not graceful worth of a damn, um, you know, it is what it is. It's there, it exists, uh, but you do get used to it. You do learn to play with it and you can still get down and get dirty and, and have a really good time with the game. So. Cool. Uh, what w as of now, uh, what would be your Bible score for this game? Pen like I guess it would be a pending score. A pending score. I'm still. I, I'm. I'm coming. I'm a flatliner today, man. I'm, I'm at a three. <laughs> I'm still a three out of five with both of these games. But with with Call of Duty, I gotta say I have a really strong feeling that once I play zombies, which is the whole thing I love about Call of Duty, my score will jump. But we can circle back to that after we finish up the Assassin's Creed stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, 
And Dan, what about you? What, what What's your, like your favorite, favorite thing from the game right now? And what would you give it? Well, just that the, they're kind of reconnecting the, uh, the branches a little bit and making it feel like it's related in the least bit to what got us here in the first place. I think that's what I love. I mean, aside from the obvious, the really low hanging fruit that it's Vikings <laughs> and it's a great Viking simulator simulator, but my biggest gripe and Ubisoft, if you're listening, give us swords. Yeah. I mean, dude. Come on. Look, I get it. There is historical precedence. Vikings didn't really use swords. Metal for it was not that prevalent in Norway. They used axes because they basically used what was in hand and axes doubled as tools for their trade and swords were mostly decorative and they were only for really high ranking super Vikings and what have you. But please, the players want swords. They want <laughs> one-handed swords that they could dual wield. Yeah. Or they, they want to feel like the TV show Vikings where, you know, they're, it's kind of historically related, but not really. They still want to have fun. So give us swords, please. Yeah. I mean, every single NPC is using a sword. They're in the game. Just pick it up. Just let them pick Give it up. Swords. <laughs> Did you never get a sword ever? Well, you can get, well, you, you can get, get Excalibur, swords. actually. You can get oh. E-Sword. You can get Excalibur, and you can even get Mjolnir. You can get Thor's hammer. It's up there behind some pretty high uh, um, level, you know, gate keys, level gates for at mm -hmm. least Thor's hammer because you have to defeat some special stuff. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I know it exists. And Excalibur is a treasure hunt. Oh. But it's still going to be a two-handed, giant, broad, you know. Yeah, you can't go you know, sword and shield is what you're saying. Claymore, basically. So, yeah. you know, just give us swords. Everybody has them. <laughs> just come on. Yeah, I second that. Give us swords. Give us swords. Uh, and and I guess for a Bible score, yeah. I would, at this point, I gave it a three, I believe, in the uh, written review because I was kind of overwhelmed in the early onset. But I'm going to bump that up at this point to a four. Oh, okay. Because cool. I, because as as I've progressed, the layers of the story have really pulled me in, and that's what I was missing at first. I was missing like I don't care about this story. Yeah. Like, okay, it's cool, but as I've gone further, it's really, it's, it's gotten a lot better, a nice. lot better. And remember what I said about you know small spoiler here. It relates to Assassin's Creed Three. I'm gonna leave it at that. Cool. Well, I look forward to that, even though I haven't played Assassin's Creed 3, but yeah. I'm, I look forward to, to get, it getting better. Um, awesome. And uh, I'll keep mine short. I uh, My favorite thing is kind of the charm around my Eivor. Uh, she's just like a, a really, she's good at flighting. The flighting stuff is funny. Yeah. Uh, it's just like cute. There's a lot of cute stuff like flighting, drinking, the drinking games. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the drinking games are fun. Having a feast is funny. Mm -hmm. um, the settlements is funny. In a way that's just like kind of tongue in cheek at parts. Uh, there's like a there's one side quest where you literally do mushrooms. I, I like that that stupid shit in, in in games like these where like it is like a very serious reverent story, but then also uh, they could talk shit to each other and they could like do drugs and uh, they could just uh, just do wacky things. Some of the mysteries are pretty funny too. Yeah, the um, mysteries. I the ones I have encountered are are like okay, yeah. that was cute. Okay. Yeah, there was one where like I had to like pick up vases and put them down to to move a guy out of a stock room that he put himself in and like it's a sauce and it smelled like shit uh when you when you <laughs> dropped it. So that was really funny too. Like I, I just like that kind of stuff. That being said, there's nothing really um Dan, you were with us on the Ghost of Tsushima thing. Uh we talked about The Last of Us. Uh, there was a lot of great games this year. Yeah. And uh, I would say Valhalla doesn't really do one thing great uh but it does a lot of things good and yeah. something's bad it's kind of janky um which they could patch out but i've been stuck in walls a bunch i've had yeah, a couple save crashes yeah Lots i've had a couple save game glitches which which sucked um but that's something you could patch out but all in all i'd probably give this it, it would have been low at, at first too because it does take a while to get going but once you really get into it um i hate to be that guy that says like stick with it for 30 hours but like no yeah it's a, it, it really can lose was, a lot of people I, mean, I swear yeah yeah and if if you don't want to stick with a game for 30 hours like i mean i understand like that's a lot yeah. of time to like spend on a thing but 
if you want a fun video game, it's not bad up until that point, but at at one point it will turn for you and something something will hit. Um, yeah. and you'll still be dealing with the quirks of the of the game itself and like annoyances and stuff but um when that one thing hits for you uh like it did for me uh it, it at least for now it bumps up to a 3.75 for me so that's where i am with valhalla uh 3.75 uh skulls uh, <laughs> i think there's a there's a you funny actually wedding. blood-soaked bibles after a raid <laughs> yeah I there we go blood-soaked bibles but no this is actually yeah blood-soaked bibles this time yeah um but that was valhalla man uh we'll we'll probably get back to you on the on the games cast when we finish these games and give you finalized scores but for now just keep up with us on facebook.com uh go to the geekdom games cast group join us we just talk a lot of we just talk about everything video games in there silly memes up to serious console war trolling battles (laughs) uh to to <laughs> and we have a lot of cool content creators like justin uh d our friend um in the stream and there's a lot of cool people you can meet so so join that uh is there anything else you want to plug justin before we get out of here once again thank you for being on uh this was awesome um yeah. we'll, hopefully you'll be able to come on more in the future yeah man, i i really wish i had gotten on one of the one of the last ones where you guys are talking about the avengers and everything like that uh i have <laughs> i'm sure we're so, not going to stop talking about so many like thoughts that. um but yeah no i uh <clears throat> i'm just i'm glad to be here i had a good time you know this was fun i would love to do more i have a lot more thoughts uh i'm a little reserved right now because this is my <laughs> first know, time here yeah it's the first time uh but you know where can people find you and uh shout out the podcast one more time it's bright lights and scary shadows you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts uh you can get at me on twitter at jc lang it's uh you want some spook at you want some spook and on facebook at you want some spook and uh at, on instagram it's bright lights underscore scary shadows uh dan i would love for you to check it out because you are the history dude and it is hey. basically all about history so yeah, yeah that's I was just gonna to say in my closing that I'm gonna go drop that subscribe right now because yes. when you're talking about Hollow Earth, I'm all about it. I'm all about that kind of stuff. So <laughs> that's extremely interesting to me. So I'm gonna go oh, drop man. that right now. I like Thank the premise you, of the podcast. It. That's so cool that you're doing like what everyone knows about it and then what the things that people don't know about it. That's really yeah. cool. And uh, it's history, you know, and I feel like history can be very, very boring. And so that's where you break it up with uh, accents and skits. And then uh, we come in with just these wild commercials that are our fake commercials. Like uh, the last commercial, I think, was Macho Mucho's Meat Water. Uh, we had one for an anti-masturbation cross. Uh, the, the first one was for a butt chug kit. Um, we, I do... <laughs> I do one where uh, I'm a, I'm a pimp, but I have like a, a Best Buy. It's called Pimp Daddy J's Porn Emponorium, <laughs> and uh, I get raided in one of them. It's uh, it's pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah, now, check are it you out. From Boston, by any chance? Yeah, outside of it. Yeah, I'm from the same town that Moody's from. Yeah, oh, I, cool. I was I was thinking this whole time listening to you talk. It almost feels like our brother Moody is here with us. Yeah, <laughs> in spirit. Yeah, maybe yep. that's what we got to do. If if we got to replace Moody, we got to get someone else from the Massachusetts area. Or why yeah. not both? Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> they get wicked up in here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, socks. And be wicked true. pisser. Nice. Dan, people could find you. Or do you want people to find you anywhere? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on again, man. Uh, we We definitely... Uh, I was I was anticipating this, so uh, I'm glad you were able to make it and glad you were able to talk about Valhalla with us. Uh, Skull, happy birthday again, sir. Yes, Thank happy you. birthday. And then everyone else, uh, Geekdom Games cast, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, follow along um, on Facebook, Geekdom Games cast. I, <laughs> I, I tripped up because I was like, oh, I said this already. So yeah, join us there. We would love to have you. We'd love to talk about whatever with you. Um, until next time, we'll be saving a seat for you on our long ship on our way to raid some anglo saxons <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> see you everyone bye cool guys thank you uh,